Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian. And I'm William. This is the podcast where we talk about all things tabletop role-playing games. And today we are talking about the legendary armors of Dungeons & Dragons. One, two, Hey, Brian. Hey, Will. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I have this need to feel safe. That's good, because we're we're all defensive here on the Dungeon Guest today. That's right. Um, we did an episode on all the legendary swords. Now it's time to talk about the armors. That episode was offensive. It was very offensive. It was nothing but offense. Yeah, the whole time. Like, I don't even know how it got monetized. <laughs> So, it is the year of the artifact. That's true. It is a fact. That's the truth. The fact of art and I. <laughs> that means that we are hyper focused on all magical items and artifacts of legend here on the dungeon cast. We are now. Yes, we've we, we got a little distracted, but we're back at it again. A lot happened. We've done the deck of many things: the wand of Orcus, the orbs of Dragonkind, and an entire episode on legendary swords. Deck of Orcus. <laughs> But what do you do when your enemy is wielding one of these legendary swords against you? You put on some legendary armor. There you go. Power creep. <laughs> That's right. We're going over not one, not two, but eight sets of legendary or very rare armor for <laughs> from D&D. For, oh, God, I forgot I put this in here. Uh, for in the words of my favorite Adventure Time minion uh, or minor antagonist, Sir Slicer, played by Peter Stormare, <laughs> Without full body armor, you are weak, and you do not look. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into it. That's my favorite yeah. episode. I love Adventure That's Time. Some Adventure Time shit right there, for sure. <laughs> all right, so uh, any questions before we start talking about all these dope armors? No, let's put them on. All right, so. Unquestioningly, without talking about it, let's just put them on. Yeah, we'll time. just we'll just, we'll just don and Nothing Dolph. Nothing bad will happen. Don and Dolph yeah. all, all day. All right, so the first one is actually two. Um, okay, good. <laughs> we have the Invulnerable Coat of Arnd, uh, and its nearest equivalent in 5e, the Armor of Invulnerability. Okay. Um, and the Coat of, of the Invulnerable, Invulnerable Coat of Arnd is actually an artifact. Uh, but since it doesn't have official 5e stats, but does have a somewhat similar legendary analog in the Armor of Invulnerability, I figured we would slap these two items together in one slot, which is good because one has lore and the other doesn't. Okay. Uh, the Invulnerable Coat of Arnd is a shining coat of chainmail which covers the chest and abdomen and will fit any humanoid regardless of their size. It renders the areas protected uh, completely invulnerable to physical attacks, protects the wearer from spells, fire, acid, cold, and disease. Oh, cool. Uh, I wish I had armor that protected me from disease. I know, right? It's like a face shield. Uh, <laughs> like, I don't know. That's what it looks like I in think 2020. It's, just, it's a magical aura is what it probably is. Do you remember when people were wearing like fucking like party city space suits out to the grocery store when COVID first started? I never saw that. Oh, really? But granted, I'm a hermit and probably just wasn't leaving my Yeah, house. I was, like, more on social because you would see. Like, I also don't have social media. Yeah, <laughs> like, people wearing, like, scuba masks. Oh, like, wow. All oh, kinds. Of, just whatever. It was free 2020 was a weird year. <laughs> yeah, just, like, carts, shopping carts full of toilet paper Indeed. looking like an astronaut. Wow. Yeah. Well, maybe that's what the invulnerable coat of iron looks like. <laughs> no, um, I hope not. <laughs> no, it's, it don't certainly want it doesn't. Look anything like so this armor set has uh, two origin stories. The first goes, when humanity was young, a nation in the distant west found itself under the foot of a tyrannical wizard king, one of the first to master the arcane arts. Oh, Seeing the nation's plight, a humble cleric named Arnd prayed to his gods for mercy and was provided a vest of shimmering chain that would stand against the mightiest foe. Damn, that sucks when your oppressive king is also a fucking dope wizard. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the like, worst, oh, right? God, what are we supposed to do about this? Yeah, I know. Is anyone else still magic? <laughs> it's the first one. He's the first one. <laughs> The priests and great craftsmen of the land uh, of the wizard tyrant Vertos worked together to create... Oh, yeah, this is the second one. I should have prefaced this. Okay. Second origin story. Instead of the gods giving it, it was a community effort. The priests <laughs> and the great craftsmen of the land of the wizard tyrant Vertos worked together to create an invulnerable coat in order to endow a new champion with the strength and courage needed to defeat their oppressor. Arnd arrived and agreed to don the coat and led the people into battle, defeating Vertos utterly. It was like an internet campaign to like fund enough money <laughs> yeah, to make this armor. A GoFundMe. If we build it, Arnd will come. 
speaks so true. And he did. <laughs> um, it is said that Arn's spirit still inhabits the armor that bears his name, attempting to aid the poor whenever possible. Okay. So we have some third edition stats for this bad boy. Did you want to read them or, or should I? Uh, yeah, I'll do it. Okay. Go Invulnerable on. Coat of Arnd. The Invulnerable Coat of Arnd is a plus five chain shirt of heavy fortification. It grants its wear damage reduction 10 slash plus five and resistance 20 against acid, cold, electricity, fire, and sonic energy. That's like sound, That's right? Like thunder. Yeah. Thunder damage. If the wearer can turn undead, treat the wearer as having a plus four class levels for purpose of caster level, turning undead, smiting evil, and laying on hands. Mm. For instance, a 21st level cleric would have an effective caster level of 25th, while a 21st level paladin could lay hands for 25 times her charisma modifier and points of damage healed. So you might be wondering why uh, why are we using examples above level 20? Mm -hmm. It's because uh, in third edition, this coat of Arnd is in a book called Epic Campaigns or something like that. And it's literally like, a supplemental book that takes your game beyond level twenty. So DLC. That's, this yeah. is what this must yeah. have been what I was thinking of a couple episodes ago. I knew there was like a removed level cap somewhere in in the D. &D yeah, editions. you know what? I I thought about that when I was doing this because yeah, you did bring that up. Yeah, so. I just felt stupid that day. I mean, it's okay to be wrong, Brian. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right. So that was the cool lore having armor that we could have got in the 5e DMG. Let's take a look at the loreless piece of work that we did. Let's yet. take a look at what we've got instead, folks. <laughs> da, 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 da. What's behind this door? It's, the, it's some blank shit. It's the armor of an invulnerability. Brian, why don't you read them stats? Because there ain't no lore to tell you. So that was cool. Lore having armor that we could have gotten in the 5e DMG. Oh, just, just your notes that you just said. Okay, yeah. yeah let me go. Brian reads stats. There it is. My bad. <laughs> I just thought it was there like the last one. No. But I have the armor of invulnerability pulled up. There's yep. a funky little picture of it right here. Is that like a mannequin? It looks like dwarven Ganondorf a little bit. Anyway. <laughs> it uh, does look like dwarven. <laughs> yeah. Why are his arms so long? His legs are so short. Okay, anyway. Armor plate, legendary, requires attunement. Uh, you have resistance. Oh, for anybody that doesn't know, attunement takes one hour of just chilling with your stuff, pretty much. Kissing it, stroking its back. Telling it you love it. Telling it that it's pretty. Uh, you have resistance to non-magical damage while you wear this armor. Additionally, you can use an action to make yourself immune to non-magical damage for 10 minutes or until you are no longer wearing the armor. Once the special action is used, it can't be used again until the next dawn. Plate consists of shaped interlocking metal plates to cover the entire body. A suit of plate armor includes gauntlets, heavy leather boots, a visored helmet, and thick layers of padding underneath the armor. Buckles and straps distribute the weight over the body. Uh, yeah, there we go. There's a bunch of notes down here at the bottom, but they're pretty much worthless for 5e stuff. This is more like a Pathfinder thing I would want. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's it. That's the armor of invulnerability. It's got lots of stuff on it. <laughs> so remember a long, long time ago on this show, you were telling me about the, the silly... Uh, werewolf exploit where werewolves were immune to being dropped from like you know the stratosphere because they're immune to bludgeoning. That wasn't even that long ago. I feel like that was like a, long a year time. ago. I feel like it was more than that. But either way, um, and then I told you that that's dumb and the werewolf would die. Uh huh. This is the case where it would work because you could do that ten minutes of invulnerability with the magic armor. Yeah. It's like yeah, that if you fall from the stratosphere and you you pop that power, you're good. Okay, sick. <laughs> like just the violent like landing you would have. It's not damaging, but holy shit. Yeah. Are you, like, cratering? Are you bouncing off of something that's too hard to crater? Like, I think because you're invulnerable, that means that, like, you're... Can you just squirrel land it, like, Black Widow style? You throw three three limbs down, one limb up? You know <laughs> what I mean? That'd be cool, I guess. That'd be pretty cool. I was thinking more like, uh, it would crater. It would crater. Because all that, all that, uh force has to go somewhere since it's not going into you yeah. so it has to go into all the environment around you so i'm imagining big ass crater you could like aoe inertia explode like a like a, you could take out a whole city yeah like it, if, what? if you, you plan this <laughs> you out fall, right if you fall from a spell jammer right. ship from fucking absolutely spell absolutely space. like obviously i'm not a physicist but i'm sure if someone did the math on this like that armor has to weigh what like 100 pounds plus your body so a 250 pound bullet yeah, falling from not the gonna sky. break out up in the atmosphere because it's and, invulnerable. And all the force that it hits with gets transferred to everything around it and not itself, right? So maybe yeah, not okay. maybe not a whole city, but like a city block, done. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, so like a small, uh, maybe some small woods. Yeah. Like a so small, small woods. woods. A farmhouse. Done. You could reroute a river. <laughs> absolutely. Fuck yeah. Absolutely you could. Okay, not bad. All right. So it, like a horde of enemies, if you cannonball yourself out of your airship down onto them, that mm-hmm. would be pretty pretty yeah. badass. Yeah. Like let the Goliath uh, barbarian like heave ho you it, off it's the a, side of the ship. It's a very ship. circumstantial ability. But when it comes into play, like everyone will be shocked. Everybody get a, gets an armor of invulnerability because it doesn't have lore, so that means there's more than one of them. So you could just like all do it at the same time, and then um, you can take out the city. That's the thing, though. It is listed as a legendary armor, um, despite so like it should be pretty rare. Ah, uh, my bad, dude. Dritz is probably wearing it. I'm sure he is. Anyways, moving on. Dritz number two. <laughs> okay, plate armor of etherealness. I see it. So here we get another loreless set of armor with the legendary tag in the 5e DMG. Nice. <laughs> I scoured the source books for each of these armor sets. 4e has a version. 4e has a version called the Plate Mail of Etherealness. But as much as I love 4e and appreciate its detailed lore, writing out lore for magic items was just really not a thing for 4e. Mm. And to be fair, uh, that would have been an insane endeavor to try and achieve because 4e literally had over 3,500 magical items. Oh, yeah. Qual- uh, uh, statted out. Quantity yeah. over quality. I mean, no, they're good quality. It's just like there's... Not like, lore-wise. Not lore-wise. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, compared to 5e's 380 or so. So, like, okay. yeah, not even in the same stratosphere uh pre 4e D just made etherealness as a property that a set of magic armor could have mm-hmm. uh, i don't know how rare it was um but it basically does the same thing that this armor does when we get to the stats you'll see okay uh well i guess i say it here in my notes the armor gives the wearer the ability to use the etherealness spell once per day which is useful and has a ton of utility which plate armor wears tend to lack um if you want to go out and pull not just the stats but also the stat block for etherealness Brian reads stats. Got it. Okay. <laughs> it's in the notes. It is. Plate armor of etherealness. It's armor, plate, legendary requires attunement. While you're wearing this armor, you can speak its command word as an action to gain the effect of etherealness. Uh, the ethereal the etherealness spell, which lasts for 10 minutes or until you remove the armor or use an action to speak the command word again. It's like an off switch. This property of the armor can't be used again until the next on. Plate consists of shaped interlocking metal plates to cover the entire body. A suit of plate includes gauntlets, heavy leather boots, a visored helmet, blah, 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 blah. It's, yeah, it's a suit of armor. Okay. We so get it. <laughs> the ethereal in this spell is a seventh level spell. It takes one action to cast uh, range of self. It's going to last for eight hours. You step into the border regions of the ethereal plane in the area where it overlaps with your current plane. You remain in the border of the border ethereal for the duration or until you use your action to dismiss the spell. During this time, you can move in any direction. If you move up or down, every foot of movement costs an extra foot of your regular <clears throat> movement, I would assume. You can see and hear the plane you originated from, but everything looks gray and you can't see anything more than 60 feet away. While on the ethereal plane, you can only affect and be affected by other creatures on that plane. Creatures that aren't on the ethereal plane can't perceive you and can't interact with you unless a special ability or magic has given them the ability to do so. I would assume like true sight. Yeah. Uh, You ignore all objects and effects that aren't on the ethereal plane, allowing you to move through objects you perceive on the plane you originated from. When the spell ends, you immediately return to the plane you originated from and the spot you currently occupy. If you occupy the same spot as a solid object or creature when this happens, you are immediately shunted to the nearest unoccupied space that you can occupy and take force damage equal to twice the number of feet you are moved. Ouch. Yeah. The spell has no effect if you cast it while you are on the ethereal plane or a plane that doesn't border it, such as one of the outer planes. Interesting. Mm. Um, and then at higher levels, you can do cooler shit, but I'm imagining the armor doesn't do that no it's just the seven level spell so the main thing about this armor that i think i I guess the most interesting thing is that like when you're wearing plate armor usually mobility is super not your strong suit right but with this once a day it very very much is phase through walls fly up to a thing that you couldn't get to you know what i mean it's it lasts for 10 minutes so it's like you can pretty much get anywhere within reason that you can see or are aware of in your, you know, couple a mile vicinity. Yeah, you're um, non-instantaneously teleporting. Yeah, basically. That's basically right. Now, getting back to different method be- or different matter because, again, it only works once a day. 
Yeah, you better hope <clears> that the <throat> thing you need to do isn't more than five minutes worth away, right? Right, right. So, like, on on one hand, that is really cool. And level spe- seven spell, that's awesome. The plus one's nice. It's plate armor, right? So now instead of eight AC, it's nine AC. That's all great. It doesn't feel legendary to me, but it's listed as a legendary armor. I, that's that seems pretty fucking le- like. Just you think so? Fucking vanishing off the plane and like flying. That mm. seems mm. pretty fucking cool. Okay, all right, yeah, that's fair. I mean, if you were just like on top of a house all of a sudden, yeah, I'd be like, oh shit, that's true, that's true. Like, oh, let me cast this big AOE, AOE spell in this like, uh, you know, at high noon on this dirt road and like fuck up you and your party, and then that guy's just on the fucking roof like two turns later. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, it's definitely super useful. Yeah, I don't know, legendary. Can you get you? Can, you can break into banks. You can be a bank <laughs> robber. You can be a legendary bank robber. There's nothing about this being lawful, like uh, no, seven parts no. or anything like that. It could so. definitely be a fighter and not a paladin who gets <laughs> yeah, this armor, or uh, like a really thick rogue. <laughs> the thickest rogue. If he could teleport behind shit, you like train. To I mean, get it could be. I think you only need you need 15 strength, and yeah, you need to take a couple feats of proficiencies, right? Strong get, rogues get exist. Strong rogues do exist. Moving on. <laughs> Uh, number three, Ifridi Chain. Now, now this one surprised me. It's a cool armor set with a name that definitely implies a certain outer planar connection and has very impressive stats. But again, we are left bereft of any lore. Okay. <laughs> Adrift upon a sea of desolation without any context for who made this awesome armor that we are wearing. Let us know what Forgotten Realms character is wearing this set of armor. I'm sure, yeah, the thing is, I'm sure they are, but like, I'm talking about the lore of the armor itself. Yeah, we, we learned yeah. the hard way that like anything that doesn't have lore attached means that there's like, a it book. exists somewhere in yeah. some book that we we're still not going to read, who likely. Who made it. So, all 5e gives us is this. Ifridi Chain is a set of enchanted chainmail that is resistant to fire and named after the fearsome Ifridi. Uh, it doesn't even confirm if it's actually connected to the Ifridi at all, just that it was named after them. I guess. So I was reading some lore on the Ifridi, and though it is true that manual labor is deemed beneath them, they are actually known across the cosmos for their magical smithing. Uh, Ifridi magic is compare. Oh, this is a direct quote. Ifridi magic is comparable to that of other powerful creatures such as demons and liches, and is quite versatile. One area in which it is preeminent is in magical weapon smithing. Ifridi are particularly renowned for their ability to create flaming weapons. See, we haven't done our Vecna episodes yet, so I'm not sure what liches are crafting. Um. Well, yeah, we'll get we, we'll get we'll to get that. get there though. Now I know that this quote here focuses on the weapon part of their smithing, but I choose to believe that. A set of Afridi chainmail hails not only from the city of Brass itself, but from the forges within the palace of the Grand Sultan themselves. Yeah, okay. Or they have to, like, sneak. Somebody has to, like, go sneak do it because it's, like, they're shamed. Yeah, sure, sure, maybe. I make armor. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) I have to do this. It's my calling. I'm so sad. Okay. why don't you read me these stats? Uh, The Afridi chain, uh, while wearing its armor, chainmail, legendary, requires attunement. While wearing this armor, you gain a plus three bonus to AC. You are immune to fire damage, and you can understand and speak primordial. In addition, you can stand on and walk across molten rock as if it were solid ground. That's useful. Mm -hmm. Made of interlocking metal rings. And that plus three to AC is fucking sexy. Yes, it is. Uh, made of interlocking metal rings, chain mail includes a layer of quilted fabric worn underneath the mail to prevent chafing and to cushion the impact of blows. The suit includes gauntlets, and the gauntlets are cool looking. They're spiked. They're Batman's gauntlets. I like the way this armor looks a lot. Me too. I think it's got a, a great look. I think it's got a cool power set. I think outside of the invulnerable coat of armed that we don't have a stat block for, it's the coolest armor so far that we've talked about today. Mm, yes. <clears throat> Anything you want to add before we move on? Let's move on. All right, number four. Robe of the Arch Ma- Magi. Magi? Magi. Magi. It's got to be Magi. Okay, for yeah, sure. it's Magi for sure. Now, this is probably, definitely, the ultimate armor for a wizard, sorcerer, or warlock. Uh, not a ton of lore on this bad boy either. Items really don't get the love and attention they need in D&D, it seems. Uh, some really cool people have worn a set of these robes, though, including Igwilv and Zastam. Okay, sick. A robe of the Archmagi is a rare and powerful robe <clears throat> worn only by the most powerful spellcasters. This elegant garment is made from exquisite cloth of white, gray, or black and adorned with silvery runes. The robe's color corresponds to the alignment for which the item was created. White robe was made for good, gray for neutral, and black for evil. You can't attune a robe of the Archmagi that doesn't correspond to your alignment. 
Um, it was believed by some that black robes of the Arch Magi can be redeemed into a set of white robes by means of powerful magic and significant wealth. Oh. Uh, these items can severely weaken the wearer if they attempt to wear a mismatched alignment robe for as long as they continue to wear it. That's interesting. Um, uh, be- very beholden to the old the old mm-hmm. ways of Dungeons and Dragons, which is very unusual for Five E uh, to do that. They slip it in in a couple spots. Yeah, but and, you know, it's still there. Maybe that's like not a question that came up at the table until you introduced this item, right? And mm-hmm. it's like now people have got to really think about it. Right. Exactly. Maybe that's the thing is you put it on uh, people that like. Why isn't it working? Yeah, you know, sort of thing. I was like, I'm well, good. We... I'm a good person. Yeah. Are you really lawful, are you though? though, my guy? <laughs> uh, okay. So, robe of the Arch Magi. It's wondrous uh, in its itemness, and it is legendary and requires attunement by sorcerer, warlock, or wizard. Uh, main casters only, please. This elegant garment is made from exquisite cloth of white, gray, that or black adorned with silvery runes. I gotta read what's here. Okay, sorry. the robe's my color bad, corresponds bad. to the alignment for which the item was created. Like, why did you send me here? Oh, I just want you to read the stats. The, the stats, man. Uh, it's it's not a lot here. Um, <laughs> okay. You gain these benefits while wearing the robe. There we go. If you aren't wearing armor, you base armor class. Your base armor class is a fifteen plus your dexterity modifier. Cool. You have advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. Very cool. Uh, your spell save DC and spell attack bonus each increase by two. Extremely cool. This yes. is extremely cool this armor doing extremely cool things. <laughs> yes, exactly. One of these things would be awesome on my armor. Yeah, these all of them things. is extremely powerful. Yeah. Plus, I mean, you look like an Assassin's Creed character when you wear it. Yes, absolutely. So, like, a wizard who pumped their decks can have a 19 AC with this robe on, you know? Wee. And that's not including if they have a shield. That's unfair. Yeah. It, yeah, it's kind of brutal to fighters and stuff later on. Advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. That's, that's also pretty brutal. good. That's pretty intense. Pretty good. And then a plus two to your spell DC and spell attack. Yeah. So basically just walk out for like, it's, or watch out for like big boulders rolling down a hill or whatever. It is a plus two, uh, it is essentially a plus two weapon, a plus two armor, and a plus two, I don't know, utility item for saving throws all in one item. It's great. This is crazy. Yeah. This that's crazy. a legendary item. Yeah. That's why I felt like the other one played of etherealness. Pfft. That's not legendary. This is legendary. This is legendary. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> this one can't teleport. <laughs> but the you don't need to. Probably the wizard the probably can. Yeah, yeah do it, the same shit. Lootly. They know blink. Indeed. All right, let's take a short rest. Okay. Turn. Indeed, we have. We're fucking back. Indeed we're we back are. again. We're going to talk about armor. But first, we're going to talk about patreon.com slash dungeoncast. If you want to support the show more than you already have, please do that. At the uh, at the end of this show, we're going to be also reading uh, some of our most recent glowing reviews and testimonials for the Dungeon Cast. So thank you guys we so are. much. If you have left a review uh, of any sort, in, uh, of any capacity, um, we might read it on the show. That's going to be really We're cool. Try. Moment. Really that's cool that's moment for, sure. for everybody. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you, that's a those two things. Leave a review on whatever platform you're listening to. Smash that like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. I'm just I'm winking at you right now. You can't see it on the audio thing because it's not a visual medium. But on YouTube, you can see I'm winking over and over <laughs> again. Uh, and if you're like on iTunes or whatever, go fucking leave that review. Hell yeah. yeah. Spotify. Do. Yep. Podbean. Mm-hmm. All those things. I ever see one of them. All of them. Stitcher. Stitcher. It it really does help a lot. Um, and obviously giving us money is, is cool too. <coughs> we improve the studio when you guys do that. Yep. All right. So, well, should we talk about Will, what do you do in your games with armor donning and doffing? Is it like an issue for you? Oh, ever? I mostly ignore it. Yeah. <laughs> I mostly ignore That's it. That's a very hand waveable thing. So my my thing is this. Um, and I, I think I brought it up on the show before. It just seems to me that martial characters are constantly forced to adhere to our real life reality, while spellcasters just don't because it's magic, right? Mm-hmm. But the problem is that like that disparity grows more and more the higher in levels you go, um, and the way I view D and D and martial characters is I try not to view their their martial prowess in real world terms. 
because you know they're punching dragons in the faces sometimes. Yeah, give them superhero um, status. I'm I'm thinking more along the lines of like you know mythology, like Perseus and Hercules and stuff like that. Like your level eighteen strength. fighters should be like fucking Hercules. Like he should be able to do things that are not realistically possible for a you know Batman physically strong character could do. You know because this is D and D. Yeah. Like if I want to play a gritty realism game, I do that, and then magic's not allowed. Right. right, because it's gritty realism, but but that's just so so donning and doffing to me kind of plays into that of like yet another penalty just that the that the fighter has to pay because everything that they do it has an analog in our real world. Mm -hmm. um, granted, I'm not criticizing anyone who does use them because it is cool to have that that little gritty nuance if you want it, but that is one of the reasons why I ignore it. Yeah, if you're hand waving spell components, you should be hand waving donning and doffing for yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's make make things fair across the board, I suppose. But playing with those rules can be cool, yes, especially if you're definitely. playing like the war of attrition against your players and mm -hmm. you want to make sure that like let's have a fight without your armor on. Can't really do it was like, oh, do you sleep in your armor? Then you must have spent ten minutes to take it off or whatever. Right, right, right exactly. So I think that's the typical it's like ten minutes to get off most that's, plate armors and yeah, stuff. That's generally although in I think in some editions it's like an hour to to dawn or doff or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's crazy. Sneak missions make more sense. Like yeah. do you want to spend ten minutes like dealing with taking off your armor? Do you have some place to leave it so you can go do the sneak? Like yeah. Yeah. Those those things can be cool and important. They can um, be totally, absolutely. Yeah. You ready? Yes, let's get back into it. Number five, demon armor. Oh, hell yeah. You know I love this armor already. <laughs> so this armor isn't actually legendary. Uh <laughs> it's considered merely very rare. Um, okay. But it sure is cursed, and that's worth talking about if you ask me. <laughs> is the pawn star guy calling a guy to come in to look at it? Is it like that? Yeah. It's absolutely. like wow, I haven't seen one of these with the with the fuck, I don't know enough about armor. With the, the blah 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 intact. The chest piece is completely undented. Yeah, this wow. one has a nice V taper on the breastplate. You know, they usually don't curve in that far. Let me call a guy. I'm gonna call a guy. He's gonna come take a look at it. I know this is good stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. So the version of this armor in the 5e DMG does look quite cool. Uh, kind of an edgy looking armor with some spikes and stuff. But I like this third edition descriptor better. <laughs> okay. This plate armor is fashioned to make the wearer appear to be a demon. Ooh. The helmet is shaped to look like a horned demon head, and its wearer looks out of the open, tooth-filled ma mouth. Claws are built into the armor's van braces and gauntlets. So if you're not, like, super close up, maybe you mistake it for a demon. Right, and away. it's dark. It's got to be dark. Too, Interesting. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, wearing or being tricked into wearing this armor is a bit of a double-edged sword. It has some pretty solid offensive and defensive benefits, and a touch of utility, too. But once put on, the demon armor is cursed to never come off. At least not without the remove curse spell. And since the remove curse spell doesn't actually remove it from the object in question, it only removes the curse effects on the user for a limited amount of time, this armor becomes a pain in the butt to don and doff. Yeah, you gotta have somebody available that can help you get it off. Yeah, because not yourself. otherwise it's only gonna take about one day for that armor to be a nightmare. Yeah, you're you're not, you're probably not a character that knows remove curse and has armor you know, I guess and if, would wear it, right? If you're a warforged though, you wouldn't care. You'd be good. Right? Who needs uh, to take you, their armor off? Are you sure? Yeah. You oh, don't I guess. You don't sleep. You don't eat. You don't breathe. You don't do any other bodily functions that would be inconvenienced by armor that does come off. They don't photosynthesize? No. They're just they're just robots, basically. Okay. Just robots. I guess. Yeah. Is there not another thing that happens? No, that's it? it. It's just it's just stuck on you. Which is another like okay, we're gonna talk about uh demon armor from a previous edition and how much better it is okay let's do <laughs> it that it seems to be the theme of this episode <laughs> um well where was i oh yeah so also after reading the third uh, edition version of this armor i think i would be inclined to beef up both the curse and benefits of this item okay so demon armor do you want to read this this is the 3e uh, yeah this plus four full plate allows the wearer to make claw attacks that deal 1d 10 points of damage strike as a plus one weapon and afflict the target as if they had been stu struck by a contagion spell. Fortitude DC 14 negates. The armor bestows one negative level on any non-evil creature w wearing it. This negative level persists as long as the armor is worn and disappears when the armor is removed. What? So you, if you were level 10 and you're not evil, you're level 9 now. That's whack. Oh, mm. that's fucking yeah. crazy. Yeah, that's a, that's a trade-off. I got to do a whole character sheet revision when I have I need two character sheets. Yeah, I mean, it, it might be stuck on you for a while, but yeah. 
holy shit so you level <laughs> the next level you take while you're in this armor is just like the character you're sheet you had yeah exactly <laughs> it's true That's so funny. uh why don't we compare that to the 5e version of it yeah sure oh geez don't do this now ipad okay uh demon armor uh well this, so this is the 5e one it's armor plate very rare requires attunement it's very silver very chrome over here it is cool uh while wearing this armor, you gain a plus one bonus to AC, and you can understand and speak Abyssal. In addition, the armor's clawed gauntlets turn unarmed strikes with your hands into magic weapons that deal slashing damage. With a plus one bonus to attack rolls and damage rolls, and a damage die of 1d8. Curse. Uh, once you don this curse armor, you can't doff it unless you are targeted by the remove curse spell or similar magic. While wearing the armor, you have disadvantage on attack rolls against demons and on saving throws against their spells and special abilities. Plate consists of shaped interlocking metal pieces, and yada, yada, yada. So what do you think? Um, this is cool. It needs more. That's it, how I feel, It's too. like they didn't salt it, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the curse should have, like, an effect that makes you go insane over, like, a course of time. Like, Maybe it starts to turn you evil, kind demonic, of like the rod of right? law like, does, yeah. The... the insinuating that like okay you can't take it off so you should become more and more demon like as you I, have I agree it on. I think that would be a really cool touch for sure um, and there are plenty of tables <clears throat> to make that help you make that happen like look at any like spending time in a demonic plane table mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know just yep. start to implement yep. like like that sort of and stuff this, yeah excellent this, idea this armor is telepathically in your head it's making you speak abyssal you know? right yeah it, it is touching your mind in some way right yeah. and, and you're attuned to it yeah. so like there's there's a thing there's some there yeah. need to be some evil implications here yeah i agree 100 percent. yeah or like, at least chaotic ones right a lawful character wouldn't put this armor on definitely not just straight up yeah all right moving on yeah number six dragon scale mail Okay. So dragon scale mail is made of the scales of one kind of dragon. Uh, sometimes dragons collect uh, their cast off scales and gift them to humanoids. Uh, other times hunters carefully skin and preserve the hide of a dead dragon. In either case, dragon scale mail is highly valued for its rarity and protective qualities, along with the prestige that accompanies its possession. By the same token, it often draws the ire and enmity of any living dragons that happen to encounter someone wearing the hide of their slain kin. Yeah, let's like look for a dragon. You're with like wearing a, Bob's skin. Yeah, look for one with the skin rash. It's like scratching a lot. A bunch uh -oh. of scales are falling off. <laughs> Just like follow a sick dragon around yeah. for a little while. Yeah, but then you're you're crafting the armor out of infected dragon scales. I feel like there would be like some sort of like disease attached to the armor. It's affecting the skin underneath and not the plates. Okay, so the there dragon is scratching them off, nice. and um, you okay. can wash them properly. Sure. Right? Absolutely, some like acid, mm -hmm. whatever yep. the dragon, whatever dragon it is, like burn it in fire. Put it in the swamp, cover it in snow, you know, like something yeah, like that. Yeah, put it on the end of a lightning rod in a storm. <laughs> yeah, see, do some bullshit. <laughs> yeah, sure. It. No, no, I'm, I'm with you. That's awesome. Okay. Um, some tavern tales speak of a time long before the era of upheaval uh, when there were instances where humanoid races and dragons fought alongside one another. While it is believed that some suits of dragon armor were a result of these alliances, in truth, the stories regarding the union of men and dragon is not historically accurate because this isn't Dragonlance. Is that, yeah, I was going to ask, is the era <laughs> of upheaval Dragonlance? No, it's Forgotten Realms. It's Forgotten Realms. Yeah. So. There's so many of these like event, world ending, changing event, like apocalypses pretty much yeah. that I can't keep track of no, which of ones are not. for which setting. Of course not. So the 4A versions of these armor came with cool descriptions and powers. Okay. Uh, I'll read a few. Unless you want to read a few. Uh, how about you? There's like five here. Why don't you read a couple? I'll read them. Okay, next sounds couple. good. <clears throat> from between the white scales of this armor, a chilling mist flows from your body to your target as you strike. Um, when you hit a target with a melee attack, the target and its adjacent allies take additional cold damage. Okay. Um, the sleek black scales of this armor grant the wearer some of the power of a black dragon. Shroud yourself in wisps of shadow that last until the end of your next turn. When you hit with a melee attack. Arcs of lightning leap from this vibrant blue armor to strike nearby enemies. Lightning arcs versus two targets within 20 feet of you. Cool. This green scale armor makes poison attacks you use more potent or worthless depending on what level you are. It's 4E, so it's, it's useful stuff. Oh, cool. Neat. <laughs> a burst of poison damage that also dazed multiple targets when you hit with a melee attack. That sounds fun. Mm -hmm. When you strike a powerful blow, flames flow from the bright red scales of this armor, up your arm and weapon and onto your foe. Ah, oh, cool. Immobilize and cause ongoing fire damage when you hit with a melee attack. That's awesome. So, fire yeah, spin. That was the, the brief descriptions and attached power of the 4E 
dragon scale mail armors. They also came with resistance to the dragon breath type and all that other stuff. Um, but uh, I thought that was a nice touch yeah, before definitely. we got into the 5e version. Here's the 5e version. It the, the image they used for it looks like something out of a Souls game, which is dope. Yeah. Um, armor scale mail, very rare. It requires attunement. Dragon scale mail is made of the scales of one kind of dragon. We already did that shit. Okay, let's go down here. <laughs> um, while wearing this armor, you gain a plus one bonus to AC. You have advantage on saving throws against the frightful presence and breath weapons of dragons. And you have resistance to one damage type that is determined by the kind of dragon that provided the scales. So see the table below. Additionally, you can focus your senses as an action to magically discern the distance and direction to the closest dragon of the type of armor within 30 miles of you. Mm. That'd be scary. You're just like popping it off randomly like, <laughs> Oh, fuck, I got a bing. <laughs> Hide your valuables. Uh, this special action can't be used again until the next dawn. So there's a list of dragons with their corresponding element that is exactly what you would think it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Black, acid, blue, lightning, brass, fire, bronze, yeah. lightning. And honestly, you yeah. could extend it. You could extend it to the crystal ones, too, if you wanted to. Yeah, custom make it if you want. Yeah. Like, you know, I wonder if this exists in, in Fizban with, like, upgraded skills dragon scale mill yeah, i didn't I see don't know. Anything. i don't remember seeing it but it could be um i'll double check that but yeah it probably would have yeah. shown up in your search actually it, it would have i mean it's easy enough to say it's like okay you have crystal dragon scale armor and you was this radiant right well there because so when i did my search there was dragon scale of oh, serpent scale armor that's different it's yeah that's different. dragon scale mail sources i'm not seeing fizzbands up here yeah, I don't. I don't think it was in there. I don't and think I don't that was carnival that was bark fizzban when I say it. Only when other people say it. <laughs> just so you guys gotcha. know. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's it. I'm not seeing anything in fizzbans for this. Okay. What are your thoughts? It's very cool. Yeah, it's a cool armor set. It's, it's deliciously super cool. full of flavor. They seasoned this one. Yeah. It you definitely delicious. want this, and you want this in a campaign that involves dragons. For oh, sure. absolutely. Yeah. You're gonna find this at some. Somebody's gonna get a set of this at some point. Yeah. Probably in a dragon's horde. Like. Yeah. While could you're be. Fucking. You kill the first major one, and you find this in there. It's like, well, I'm going to go kill all the others, you know? Like, right. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Well, next up is number seven, Dwarven Plate. So here we have another very rare and not legendary armor. Very rare. But honestly, this one is better than a lot of the so-called legendary armors. Uh, Lore-wise, up until 5e, uh, Dwarven Plate Mail was a special form of plate mail forged for and worn exclusively by dwarves. But now anyone can wear it. Okay, lame. Um, yeah. Dwarven plate mail is thick and cumbersome when compared to regular plate mail or elven variations, but offers more protection to its wearer. Uh, it also, it, it was usually made from black iron. Okay. Uh, 4E has a version of this armor. Um, Pre-4E dwarven plate was not considered to be magical. It was simply adamantine armor crafted by dwarves for dwarves. Okay, cool. So some dwarves tried really, really hard to make this certain set of armor, and so here you go. Basically, it was just, well, you know, dwarves are legendary uh, crafter, so like you yeah, know, their in previous, best guys did their best work. And like, yeah, well, in previous editions, master work armor and master work weapons were a thing, and they had different stats. You know, um, it wasn't magical necessarily; it was just really, really well made stuff. Gotcha. Five E doesn't really have that, mm. um, but this this uh, dwarven plate, Five E dwarven plate, is really cool stat wise. If you want to go over it, I do. Uh, while wearing a oh, dwarven plate is armor plate, very rare. While wearing this armor, you gain a plus two bonus to AC. In addition. If an effect moves you against your will along the ground, you can use your reaction to reduce the distance you are moved by up to 10 feet. That's pretty cool, the movable mm -hmm. rod style. Uh, plate consists of shaped interlocking metal. <laughs> that's it. It's plus two yeah. to AC, and you can't get moved as good. Yep, and that's that's it. So like a charge just, attack that pushes people. Yeah, like, any any type of push, like a thunder wave. You can just like yeah. negate that, a lot of that shit. Yeah, you really can. A lot of it's only going to send you 10 feet, I feel like, or Exactly, five. Like, exactly. Some of them do 15, but like. Yeah, in that case, five. you cutting it down is great because that's far. Yes, Yeah. So. it's true. Especially for dwarves who don't like to move because they're not as good at it by well, five feet or so. Well, dwarves actually, well, and now I'm like, wait a minute. Wait, dwar do dwarves, I think dwarves maintain 30 feet of I, I think, walking speed? I think yeah they do, but also I think dwarves have a a racial trait trait that um, prevents them from being moved as well. I think that's a at least for one of the sub races. I think I don't remember that. Yeah, let me. Uh, well, I know it isn't four e. So hold on, five <laughs> e D D dwarf. I can't believe I'm we've been this. playing less five e and playing more other games since the whole thing. 
Plus, I just I'm not going to keep all this information in my head at any one given time. It's true. It's why it's all written um, down and searchable now. Let me see here. No, they have 25. Oh, but their speed is not reduced by wearing uh, heavy armor, but they have 25 feet speed. Um, no, they don't. I guess that was a 4E thing. But they transferred it to this magic item made by dwarves instead of 5E. Okay. That's interesting. All right. Moving on. We got our last one, and this one's a big one, so I saved the best for last. Um, powered armor. Mm-hmm. This armor has enough going on stat-wise to be an artifact in its own right. The powered armor of Qualish or Qualish. I said I, I Qualish. 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 Right that, but who knows? Uh, so the armor itself does not have a ton of lore written about it, but it can be found in the Five E Adventure module, the Lost Laboratory of Qualish. Uh, it resembles a suit of unusual plate armor with finely articulated joints connected by an oily black leather-like material. Mm -hmm. The armor has been worked to create the appearance of a heavily muscled warrior, and its great helm is unusual in that it has no openings, only a broad glass plate in in the front with a second piece of glass above it. Strange plates, tubing, and large metal bosses adorn the armor in seemingly random fashion. On the back of the armor's left gauntlet is a rectangular metal box from which projects a short rod tipped with a cone-shaped red crystal. Oh, what? I'm having trouble visualizing that. There's so much stuff. <laughs> it is a lot. Since the armor itself is lore bereft, let's talk about the person who made it, Qualish. Qualish is a gnome archmage and renowned inventor. Born over 400 years ago, he is best known as the creator of the apparatus of Qualish, among other magic items. He held a fortified offshore laboratory in Zeef, known today as the Arm of Qualish. Following his disappearance, it is is rumored that he's still alive today in some form. Is this, what what time are we referencing from? I think it's Greyhawk. I'm pretty sure this is Greyhawk stuff. So 400 years ago from the current Greyhawk era. I think, yeah, it's just 400 years ago from wherever the fuck you're playing. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whatever era you're playing, yeah. it's 400 years, yeah. 400 years ago this happened. Qualish, as a scholar, joined an ill-fated expedition into the Barrier Peaks trying to find Daoine Glowing, a legendary city of glass creatures. Um, the rest of the party perished, but Qualish found a wrecked planar craft of unknown origin. He spent years exploring it and used much of the craft's unique magical technology as a laboratory, building planar gates of his own design. One gate resulted in a bone devil driving him out of the laboratory and turning it into a monastery for its own cult. (laughs) Qualish then relocated to Deoine Glow... Glow, How did I say it the first time? This this segment of the episode is a minefield. (laughs) It really is. Deoine Glowing. glowing, uh, Inhabited by Kenku worshipping a Medusa that turned victims to glass. Oh, cool. I never even considered using the Medusa to turn... Than things into other things. Stone. Yeah, right. But that's cool. Uh, Qualish opened a gate to Jubilex's slime pits to clear the city to use for his own new laboratory, <laughs> which he then <laughs> cut off access to, allow him to research further. Yeah, Medusa of, of isn't it Jubilex? Not Jubilex? Yeah, you're right. Uh, <laughs> we're going to hear about that one. I'm sure. It wouldn't it be cool to have a Jubilex Medusa that turns people into juice? Like into, you know, when Jello, before you. Fr- you refrigerate Jello? Yeah, uh, yeah. How it's like a syrupy juice? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, sure, that'd be cool. That'd be gross, but okay. I think that'd be fun. Now, yeah. I'm, like, yeah, my brain fun. is like, what? What fun. else can we Medusa? Well, I mean, just Jello. Jello is a good one. Yeah, you turn them into a news, like a gelatinous cube. Yeah, exactly. Neat. All right. So Qualish is best known as the creator of the apparatus of Qualish. Later in his life, he created a superior, greater apparatus of Qualish, an <laughs> iron barrel which transforms into the shape of a small dragon capable of flight and capable of firing a small cannonball from its mouth. Uh, however, the risk of accidental backfire was significant in this item. Okay. The Ark of Qualish, a grand flying machine, was once used by the giant demon lord. Oh, God, I hate this one. Kostichi. The patron of frost giants in a raid against the city of brass. Okay. So this dude, <laughs> he just stole, he fucking Grand Theft autoed your flying boat. <laughs> Basically, but this dude like rolls with the, you know, the heavy hitters. Like he, he's, he, his stuff is always dealing with demon lords or elemental planes or whatever, you know. He's just inventing too good. Yeah, he's just too good of an inventor. Want to read me the stats on this crazy armor though? Yes, yes I do. Excuse me. Okay, it's long. Um, and we are on the D and D five E wiki, wiki dot dot com. Do you don't have to name for, the illegal site that we're on? Oops. 
Um, because we didn't have it in D and D Beyond. We're not giving them any more fucking money. Anyway, um, source is the lost laboratory of Qualish or laboratory, as we've been saying. Armor is plate. Legendary requires attunement. Powered armor resembles a suit of unusual. We did. We did all that, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, while wearing this armor, you gain the following benefits. You have a plus one bonus to AC. Your strength score is 18. This has no effect if your strength is already 18 or higher. You have advantage on death saving throws. Neat. Very cool. The armor has further capabilities that can be powered either by energy cells or by your own life energy. You can use a bonus action to draw power from an energy cell or sacrifice hit points to gain one of the following benefits. Emit a force, uh, emit a force field to gain two d six plus five temporary hit points, one charge or five hit points. Activate boosters to gain a flying speed of fifteen for one minute. Nice, one charge or five hit points. You can just use your life force to do this. Uh, firearm mounted laser ranged weapon attack plus eight to hit range of one hundred twenty feet. One target hit is going to be two d six radiant damage, one charge or five hit points. Trans, you're Iron Man. Translate yeah. any writing you can see in non magical language. To a total of 1,000 words or over one minute, one charge, or five hit points, fill the armor with air, allowing you to breathe normally in any environment for up to one hour, one charge, or five hit points. Gain dark vision to a range of 60 feet for up to one hour, one charge, or five hit points. That last one's fucking worthless in 5th edition. <laughs> Unless you happen to need it. Which you probably don't. Uh, yeah, if you're human. The armor can, or or are you dancer? The armor can accept only one energy cell at a time. It is found with one energy cell attached, containing two d10 charges. So I guess you have to like make or find these uh, energy cells, which are. I would imagine there's more weird, in the laboratory. Yeah, yeah, weird resource pool that you can substitute. So they're just killing people, converting them to energy cells. Could be much what's Could going be. on. Now that's a legendary armor set, if you ask me. Uh, we have lots to go. Oh God, we're not done. No powered armor options. Depending on where and how it appears in the adventure, you might wish to modify the features of Qualish's legendary powered armor. Uh, okay, that's a weird sentence. Automatic defenses. Unless Qualish deactivates the suit's automatic defenses, no one can approach the armor without setting those defenses off. Treat the armor as a shield guardian that has stored a magic missile spell cast using a fourth level spell slot. Ouch. Mm -hmm. uh, when the armor is reduced to, to zero hit points, its defenses are rendered inert and can be safely approached. Well, this, is, this is kind of behind the DM kimono here for that adventure, so I don't know if we want to just be spoiling it. Uh, we've never had a problem with it before. Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, if this isn't relevant to, like, just we're talking about what the armor does. What what they're saying is, like, this armor has, like, does have lore and should be respected, I feel yeah. like, is what these... Um, should, do you want me to keep reading? It's got... I mean, it sounds to me like, again, I haven't ran this adventure, but it sounds like if you want this armor, you're going to have to fight it first. Yes, you will. Um, Battle of Wills, when dawned by... Yeah, see, there's stuff that... I need to read this. Battle of Wills. When, okay. the dawned, when dawned by a new user, the armor deems itself superior and attempts to take possession of that user. The Holy user, shit. The user must succeed on a DC 13 charisma saving throw or be possessed by the armor. While possessed, the user is incapacitated and loses control of its body but retains its awareness. The armor uses the possessed user's statistics as adjusted by the armor, but doesn't gain access to the user's knowledge, features, or proficiencies. Mm. Freeing a, a creature trapped inside the armor first requires defeating the armor's automatic defenses, as listed above. The trapped creature can also attempt a DC-20 charisma saving throw each day at dawn. On a successful save, the armor no longer controls the creature and can be safely donned by the creature at the any time mm, uh that's yeah. like the um what is ultimate spider-man where the doc ock is become spider-man oh yeah 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 so, uh, superior like spider-man superior yeah, spider-man yeah. stasis whenever a creature wearing the armor drops to zero hit points the armor places that creature into a state of stasis while in this state of stasis the creature is stable and does not make death saving throws but the armor takes control of the creature as above additionally the armor attempts to assume the identity of the user assuring their allies that nothing is amiss <laughs> freeing the user first requires defeating the armor's automatic defenses uh, a creature in stasis does not make charisma saving throws to break the armor's control and finally alternative power Powered armor originally required energy cells to fuel it, but was adapted by Qualish to be fueled by the life energy of the creature wearing it. You might decide that the armor can also draw power from additional sources, or that energy cells can be recharged with the aid of a tinker, inventor, or artificer. Mm. Uh, it might also be possible for allies to connect to the armor through the use of magic that generates a conduit, something like an astral silver cord. Uh, while so connected... 
a willing ally can give up hit points as a reaction to fuel the armor's abilities. Oh, wow. The whole party can connect this thing. That's fucking crazy. That is pretty cool. Did, did I hear you right when I said that the, when you said that the armor would try and pretend like nothing is amiss? Yeah. It's basically going to possess <laughs> you and be nothing like, Nothing is, is wrong, fellow human. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. What's up, guys? No, it's good. I've always talked like this. Yeah, that's it. That's there's so, a lot here. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, so that's the powered armor, man. Found in the lost laboratory of Sick. Qualish. Yeah, probably the most legendary of the armors that we talked about today. Definitely a very very cool. Become Iron Man or die or get possessed, yeah. and then the will of Qualish will be imposed. I, I don't know. I don't to know. what end is the armor like? I mean, Qualish. I mean, I don't know that much about Qualish, but he seems to, he has this tendency of making stuff and just fucking off somewhere else. <laughs> he just gets bored, goes and does something else. Right. Yeah. So, uh, like Mephistopheles. A little bit like Mephistopheles. Okay. Maybe he's Mephistopheles. Uh, maybe he's definitely like rolling in the deep, right? Like mm -hmm. you said. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, if there's nothing else, I think we get ready for a long rest. Let's get ready for a long rest. All right. Hey everybody, welcome to The Long Rest. This is the part of the episode where we say thank you for listening to the show and tell you we love you. Love you. Thank you. We love you. <laughs> okay, so we're, <laughs> um, I think, what, next recording session we'll have a Patreon episode? Yes, very um, much so. How's the topic coming along? Oh man, I'm trying to remember. Oh, you know what? I need to call the vote, but there's quite a few topics that have been suggested. Okay, so it's it's going well. Yeah. You you guys can um, make suggestions of what we cover next. Uh, once a month, we take our our patrons' vote. So there's like a Patreon system where they nominate topics and then vote on them. Uh, you can participate in that as a Patreon member at any level. Um, and as we promised last episode and the episodes before that, we're going to start reading. Um, re oh, go to Patreon.com/slash oh, the Dungeon Cast to support the show. Uh, there's lots of cool benefits there. I forgot the vote is actually going and uh, four topics, but the winning topic right now is they want us to cover uh, D and D five E backgrounds. Five E backgrounds, yeah. okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. um, I, I probably have a lot to say about that. Okay, so uh, the next best thing you can do is leave a review, which is why we want to read some reviews. I'm going to read a couple, probably like three, of our most recent reviews from Apple Podcasts. So um, this one. I, it doesn't I say, hate this fucking podcast. No, yeah, I'm not going to say who left it or anything like that, but I will read the whole thing in its entirety. Taking it up a notch. Five-star review. I am a new DM and have recently started a DD campaign. The Dungeon Cast podcast has been a huge help. I have the books and will uh, and the will to work, but the Dungeon Cast helps to answer questions and fill in the gaps. Awesome show. Keep up the good work. Uh, thanks so much. You know who you are if you left that review. Oh, is that um, the one that was... They accidentally left a one star, but I, I, they meant a five star. I I wouldn't know about that. I okay. know that I know that we talked about that, okay. and that's something. So we're I'm, just not saying their usernames. Uh, Any of them? I can. Should I? Yeah, I think so. Is I that think ethical? People, people like the shout outs. That's what most mostly happens. Oh, that was from Asher K via Apple Podcast. So thank you, Asher. Um, and then the next couple I'm going to read. Okay, so next one is my favorite fantasy TTRPG podcast. Five star review. Thank you. Uh, long time fan of the show. It is how I have become the lore expert at my table and amongst my friends. Will and Brian are fantastic people that put on a fantastic show, and I wish them nothing but the best. From Varys Ellen, Apple Podcast. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Varys. That one came in uh, last month. Uh, this is great. Five-star review. I'm a new DM, and I didn't even know that D&D existed until Christmas. I oh, started wow. getting really into D&D, and I'm making my own D&D setting. I'll be sharing this campaign with my bros, but I wouldn't even know that much if I didn't use this podcast. It has helped me a lot on my journey towards ellipses. So there's more There's more to the review, but... Welcome to the hobby. Yeah. yeah um, Christmas, yeah. Wow. Capitalo via Apple Podcasts. Ooh, a, a friend from north of the border. <laughs> Indeed. From Canada. Indeed. Hello, Canada. <laughs> Hello. Um, for the last two episodes, I've been wearing my Kings jersey. It's because it is the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs, which I know... Uh, our buddy Capitalo is more likely to know about, at least. Or I don't know if you're a hockey fan or not, but you're definitely more likely to be one. Um, go Kings. They're 2-1 at the time of this recording against the Edmonton Oilers. Sorry about all the Edmonton uh, fans and their love of the greatest player in the world, Connor McDavid, who I recognize, but has been contained. And the game he scored. Has been contained. The game he scored any actual goals in, you no. lost. So Ooh. he's uh, essentially pointless. 
damn. <laughs> yeah. So too too bad. There's also uh, I wasn't expecting hockey talk on this part of the podcast. I had I had to. So too, yeah. <laughs> too bad. There's also oh yeah. Too bad. There's also Leon Drysidel though, who's an absolute fucking animal and is like this dude's number two. Oh, so, I see. I see. Uh, He's picking up the slack. He is not contained. <laughs> he is absolutely he, unhinged. The man is on the loose. He is tearing into us because we're too busy worrying about the other guy. Interesting. Uh, but we, yeah, we're two one, and uh, I don't care what you have to say about the officiating. So. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's that let's just throw that in but thanks thank, for the review though yeah thank you guys so much uh sorry canada sparked me into into that spiral but um <laughs> uh if you guys want to follow me on instagram i'm now sounds good inc and uh i i've been like posting all kinds of hockey stuff lately but um there's dungeons and dragons content sometimes too and like you can see my turtle <laughs> <laughs> no not your turtle yeah, we have a dragon turtle. We do. Like we have a dragon a turtle. mascot of the show, Sally. Yep. Uh, you can go learn about her on my on my Instagram feed. She's pretty awesome. She is pretty awesome. She's getting bigger as well as noticed, and her yes. shell's rounding out. She's somewhat of a rescue. She didn't have the best home for a while, so her shell got uh, a little funny, but it's it's healing and, and it's looking good. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, let's. Uh, is there anything else we want to talk about? I think we're good. I think we covered everything. Yeah. You know? Check us out on Discord. Check out the Twitter. All the links are in the description. It's Follow, true. like, subscribe. Send us a thing. I I went to the P.O. Box on Friday, and we didn't have anything yet, but I know that we're expecting, expecting stuff, things, like yeah. quite a few things. So yeah. uh, thanks, everybody, uh, that has sent stuff to the P.O. Box. Um, yeah, if you send us, like, a postcard or something like that, we'll read it on the show. Absolutely. Top of the show, too. Not, we don't even wait for long rest stuff. Um, so, yeah, uh, leave a review. Go to Patreon. Figure that out. Uh, it's a cool it's there's a bunch of cool stuff out there we've got a lot of cool projects in the works so um yeah go check those out i don't think there's anything else i think we should call it a game let's call it a game we'll talk to you guys later bye